I mean, I think it, it started, I read a lot, even as a kid. My mother encouraged me to read. Um, and I was just always interested in story and uh, reading stories. And um, I, I started writing at a wrong, very young age. And uh, I remember writing, uh, having an assignment in grade school to write uh, like a short story. Like it was a creative writing that you could just write whatever you wanted. And the teacher was very impressed that I was, my prose, I was, you know, indenting the dialogue and everything. And it's like, we haven't taught you that yet. And it's like, oh, well, I read a lot. So, so I think it was my dad, though, that had suggested it after I'd written a few things for school, like just stories and things. Like, maybe you should pursue that. And I, I guess I could always say, point that back to my dad, because I, I wasn't considering it. I was just sort of copying things I liked, you know? But as far as screenwriting, um, I always, uh, you know, I wanted to make films. I started making Super 8 horror movies when I was 14 in my backyard and painting my friends up as zombies. But it was when I actually got to film school and I was looking to how to differentiate myself. Everyone wanted to be a director or producer. And not everyone was as interested in the screenwriting aspect of it. And uh, I think the first time I actually picked up, you know, we had a script library at school. I went to Emerson College in Boston, which is where I'm from originally. And uh, I forget which one it was, but I looked at a script and the formatting and everything, and it just made sense. It just totally made sense to me. I always get a, 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 I compare it to, I'm also a musician. My original career uh, uh, aspiration was to become a rock star. And I play guitar very much. And guitar solos are the thing I love, but I was always in my brain. I couldn't understand, like, where did they come up with these ideas? Where did they come up with them? It was very much a struggle to be able to put all those concepts together, how you make a guitar solo. But I looked at a script, at least a scene, you know, from slug line to action to dialogue. And it's like, it instantly made sense to me. Still took years to learn craft, to learn structure, character arcs, you know, the, just the act one, two, three, the mid, all that stuff takes time. But I always had an intuitive sense of just at least a, a scene and how, like, I remember learning things later. It's like, you know, get into a scene late, get out early. I was like, I kind of already intuitively knew that. I always came from watching lots of movies and then I read a lot. But yeah, I think that, that was the thing. Uh, just looking at a script and the format, it just it excited me and I just understood it. It just made sense. It's weird. It's kind of weird. Very, very gratifying. I think it's a, this, this, yeah, this would be 2018. Um, as all writers, we spend a lot of time just writing and working other jobs and having, finding other ways to pay money. And I think you, and I, I will assume that we all get to a point where like, do I just keep pursuing? I mean, this is so difficult. This is so hard. I mean, you could actually, you can learn the skills, you could be good, but there's still this whole other bunch of factors into actually having any kind of career at it. And I think at moments and being named a top 25 screenwriter to watch moment is like, maybe I should pursue this. You know, it's like, you know, you're getting outside from the outside telling you, yeah, you, you, you're pretty good at this, you, you know. So it, it's, in, it's an inspiring way to, to uh, you know, keep going. Yeah, so, yeah, so I got on the top 25 list through an evaluation for a script called Underground, this heist thriller that I wrote about Boston, my hometown. And um, it got optioned, and we are now going out to cast with it. Uh, early on in this process, we, the, the producers know me from my production experience. I've not actually directed a full feature yet, um, but they were eager to back me in that direction. But then when we went out to the kind of caliber of actors we're looking at, agents kind of gave pushback, or oh, first-time director. So we backed off on that. We tried to find an attached director. Um, there were good things and bad things about that. And just this, we kind of, after the new year, did a recap meeting back at the production office. And we just said, let's just go back to our original plan. So I'm now directing, which is very exciting. So we're going out to cast with me attached as director. Um, really, it's the, the, the way this company works. They have so many relationships with distributors and financiers and investors. There's, the investors and distributors have read the script and are excited about it. They've already made offers on it. We're holding off because without knowing the cast, we don't really know what it's worth. And um, so, yeah, it's really just about getting cast attached and we're hoping to be shooting. So Underground went out. That 
I think it was top 50 in fast track. It made the, it, I'm trying to think, oh, it was emerging screenwriters. It was, it, it placed in pretty much everything I entered it in. And then this past year, my newest one called uh, Harm's Way, which is a little suspense drama, that pretty much is placed in everything as well. It was top 50 in fast track this past season. So it's very, very exciting to, uh, you know, get to the next one. Fingers crossed. It does as well as the last two. I don't know. Maybe it's just luck. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, but uh, keep plugging away because I, I love it. You got to be passionate about it. It's hard work. You can't. You can't. Uh, I don't think you can do it without without the passion. It's just, it's just sometimes it's just ditch digging, <laughs> and you just got to keep moving forward. Get that hole dug, and then sometimes it's just you know inspiring and inspirational, and you know, these little magical moments just happen. Yeah, so yeah, your script produced, which I say promotes and helps promote, well, I don't know what else, I mean, kind of partnered with, right? Yeah, that one, uh, which is a new contest, and uh, I, I won the grand prize. It's a different script, the uh, Blue Motel, which is this contained crime thriller. Um, and it's, uh, the, the, the prize was to purchase a script and actually produce it, produce it this year, even. Um, that's the goal of the contest. There's, yeah, your script produced Two coming up. I mean, it's it's now. You can you can enter now, and that's uh, the same deal. Um, it's a Duval Bacall Films, and and yeah, they're actually going to make the movie. I mean, it's going to make a low budget little movie out of your script, and that's that's the prize, and it's going to happen. I mean, it's very exciting. So yeah, we're right now we're just working on sort of uh, developing the script a little more, and then soon hope to start casting and start looking at locations and all that kind of fun stuff. It's very exciting. My background is I'm a first assistant director in indie films, uh, mostly the like lifetime style films. I work with a lot of uh, those kinds of companies. Um, so, so a lot of lifetime movies aren't produced by lifetime. They're, uh, they're produced by a, a, an outside company that has a relationship with lifetime. It's basically they, they bring the lifetime the project and they say, yes, show us the movie when it's done, that kind of deal. So I work with a lot of those. And uh, through those relationships, I've pitched a few ideas to uh, one of those companies. And um, hopefully one of those might happen this year as well. We'll see. I mean, it's pretty exciting. It's just uh, incredibly supportive. Um, I mean, just be from things like Third Thursdays and getting a bunch of people together and, and just the support you guys have given. Um, I mean, just case in point, um, through ISA, I forget, there was an introduction to an independent producer probably um, a couple years back. He read something you guys passed along of mine and uh, got a coffee meeting. We kind of you know, hit it off a bit, but you know, the, the script was something he couldn't do at the time, you know, all those kinds of things happened. And now it's two years later, he's moved on, become a manager, and I have a meeting with him next week. It's actually like, you know, talking about representation, nothing said, but I'm just, you know, that's kind of, not only the yay for you kind of, you know, which is great, which is so important, but I mean, there's actual connections to actual professional things. I mean, it's all about the networking, and I say it's huge on that. And their notes are awesome. I love the notes. <laughs> I love them. <laughs>